in previous video, I mentioned that one single CA or certification authority cannot handle all the tasks and responsibilities related to uh, digital certificates. So you saw that there are multiple entities and technologies involved in handling a digital certificate between two entities. So for example, Alice had to generate her public and private key and then certification authority had to verify her identity and then issue a certificate. Then the certificate must be placed in a certificate repository. And if someone, something goes wrong with that certificate, revoke it and place it in a certificate revocation list. So you can see managing all of this can quickly get out of hand and become overwhelming. That's why we need an appropriate infrastructure to manage all of this. Hence, we have public key infrastructure. So public key infrastructure is basically the underlying infrastructure for management of public keys. So it is a framework for all of these entities involved in digital certificate management. So in this lesson, we're going to go through the details of technologies behind public key infrastructure. So as you know by now, root certification authorities are the one responsible for issuing uh, certificates. And to offload a little bit of work from uh, root certification authority, we have intermediate certification authority that can do some of the tasks of the root certification authority. And the registration authorities that help with the collection and verification of the uh, information. Now, let's say we have uh, two people like Alice and Bob that want to communicate with each other. Now, these two are working for two different companies. One works for AWS and the other one for uh, Palo Alto Networks. These two have never seen each other and don't know each other. And now they want to communicate and uh, to identify each other and uh, secure their connection. They're going to use a, a digital certificate. So... When Bob sends his certificate to Alice, he says, I'm Bob and here's my public key. And uh, to prove that I am who I say I am, here is my uh, digital certificate. And you can verify that my digital certificate has been issued by DigiCert SHA-2 Secure Server CA. Now, when Alice receives that certificate, Alice's certificate is issued by Amazon. So Alice says, I don't know you, I don't know Palo Alto Networks, so I don't know your certificate, and I don't know DigiCert who issued your certificate. Now let's imagine these two companies are in two different countries. So Alice probably has never heard of DigiCert, which in this case we assume that it's not in the US and it's in another country. So Alice says, I don't know about DigiCert, so I don't trust DigiCert. So how can I trust you? So you can see there is a trust issue here because Alice doesn't even trust the, per the organization who has issued Bob's certificate. So how can she trust Bob? Now the concept is pretty much like uh, me going to a total stranger, let's call him Tom, and tell Tom, lend me some money and I uh, promise to return your money with interest in a year. Then Tom is going to look at me and say, hmm, well, I will lend you some money. I, I don't know you. And how do I know that you're going to return back my money? Then I tell Tom, well, I'm a good friend of Bill. Bill knows me. Then if Tom doesn't know Bill, then Tom's going to tell me, I don't know Bill. Who the heck is Bill? But if Tom knows Bill and uh, trusts Bill, then Tom's going to say, okay, let me call Bill and verify that. And if Tom calls Bill and Bill tells Tom, hey, yeah, I know who rang and uh, he's trustworthy and he's going to return your money with a good interest, then Tom's going to say, okay, I'm going to lend you some money. Now, here you can see in the real world, I went to Tom and uh, Tom knows Bill. So based on the trust that he has in Bill, he trusted me. Now, how can I have a similar trust level or trust model here in digital certificate? In public key infrastructure, we have something which is called a trust model. 
And in this trust model, we have three types of trusts. We have hierarchical trust model, distributed trust model, and bridge trust model. In a digital certificate world, when someone receives a certificate from someone else, even if they don't know them, they can refer to these trust models to see if they can find someone else or another certification authority who trusts that certificate that they have received, received and then they trust that certificate based on the trust that they have in the certification authority. Let's go through these trust models and explain a little bit more what these mean. The first trust model that we have is hierarchical trust model. In hierarchical trust model, we have one single hierarchy with one master certification authority called the root. So in this case, the root signs all the digital certificates and issues digital certificate. So for example, if Bob and uh, Alice want to communicate with each other, and uh, when Bob sends a certificate to Alice, Alice says, hmm, I don't know your certificate. Let me see who issued your certificate. Then she says, oh, XYZ certification authority has issued your certificate. XYZ has issued my certificate too. So I trust XYZ. And since your certificate is issued by XYZ, I can trust your certificate too. So we can see how hierarchical trust model works. But the problem with this hierarchical trust model is that it can be used in an organization where one CA is responsible for the digital certificate of everyone in that organization. But on a larger scale, this hierarchical trust model has limitations and it causes bottleneck because you cannot use one single CA all around the world. It's going to create a lot of backlogs. That's why we have another type of trust model, which is called distributed trust model. So instead of having one single certification authority, as we had in hierarchical trust model, in distributed trust model, we have multiple certification authorities. And these certification authorities uh, issue digital certificates. And then all these intermediate certification authorities have their uh, certificates signed by one a root certification authority. So in this case, let's say we still have the uh, same Alice and Bob. They want to communicate with each other. When Bob sends a certificate to Alice, Alice says, I don't know your certificate. Then let me ask my certification authority to see if they know you. So let's say Alice has uh, her certificate signed by ABC Intermediate Certification Authority and Bob has his certificate signed by EFG Intermediate Certification Authority. So when Alice receives Bob's certificate and uh, sees that Bob's certificate is signed by EFG uh, Intermediate Certification Authority, Alice is gonna go to her certification authority, meaning ABC, and says, I received this certificate. This certificate is signed by EFG. Do you know EFG? Do you trust them? Then ABC is going to say, well, I don't know them. Let me go to XYZ certification authority and ask them. When ABC goes to XYZ certification authority and asks them about EFG, XYZ is going to say, oh yeah, I know them because I signed their digital certificate. So they're good. When XYZ tells ABC that EFG is good, then ABC uh, certification authority is going to go to Alice and tell her, you know what, EFG is good. It's signed by someone that I really trust in. And that's how Alice can trust a Bob certificate. This distributed trust model is the basis for most of the end user digital certificate on the internet. So that's how they can verify each other's certificate. The third method of uh, trust model that we have is bridge trust model. And in the bridge trust model, we have a one bridge certification authority that doesn't issue any digital certificate. The only responsibility that it has is to work as a facilitator to interconnect different certification authorities. So 
they're sitting there when a certification authority wants to find out if another certification authority is trustworthy, they can just uh, refer to this uh, breach certification authority and those guys can verify the other certification authority. So they don't issue any certificate. They just facilitate the uh, verification process. Now, when we go back to our earlier example, when Bob sends his certificate to Alice, you can see the hierarchy here. You can see Bob's certificate has been signed by DigiCert SHA-2 Secure Server CA. And that certification authority certificate has been signed by DigiCert, which is a root certification authority. And on Alice's site, her certificate has been signed by Amazon and Amazon certificate has been signed by Amazon root CA1 certification authority. And these Amazon root CA trust DigiCert root CA. That's why Alice can trust Bob's certificate because they go through this hierarchy to verify each other. Now, if this communication is between two browsers, then your browser knows about a lot of uh, root and intermediate uh, certification authorities. And all of these verification processes are done by your browser. Let's take a look at, for example, Chrome browser. Here on Chrome, if you go to settings, and then under settings, uh, you on the left side, privacy and security, and then here under security, you scroll down all the way. Here we have manage certificates. When you click on that, a new window pops up. And here under this new window, uh, there is a tab that shows uh, intermediate certification authorities and trusted root certification authorities. So if I click on that trusted root certification authorities, let me increase the size of this column. And you can see here we have Amazon root CA1 and if I scroll down a little bit, uh, you can see DigiCert Global Root CA is here too. So both of these are trusted by your browser. Your browser knows about these two. And when your browser receives a certificate that is signed by either of these two, the browser knows that, okay, that certificate is valid. Now, this Chrome browser here has intermediate certification authorities. You can see the list of most of the intermediate uh, certification authorities are here too. So if that intermediate certification authorities uh, name is here, then uh, your browser trusts it. If the name is not here, and if that intermediate certification authority certificate is signed by trusted root certification authority, then your Chrome browser trusts that and knows that that certificate is okay. Now, another thing that we have under public key infrastructure is certificate policy. Certificate policy is basically a set of rules that governs operation of a public key infrastructure. So it provides recommended baseline security requirements for the use and operation of certification authority, registration authority, and other PKI components. The next entity that we have here is Certificate Practice Statement or CPS. So CPS is basically a technical document that describes how the CA uses and manages certificates. It also covers how to register for a digital certificate, how to issue them, when to revoke them, and last but not least, procedural controls and key pair management. Every certificate has a life cycle. There are four stages in the life cycle of a certificate. The first stage is creation. At this stage, the certificate is created and issued to the user. The next stage is suspension. So there are times that a certificate needs to be suspended. For example, we have an employee in the company and that employee goes to uh, goes on a leave of absence. So when the employee is not there, the certificate shouldn't be valid. So that certificate needs to be suspended for the period that the employee is not working in the company and then it gets reactivated when the employee returns back to work. The next is uh, revocation. So we talked about the revocation before. So there are times that things happen to a certificate and that certificate needs to be revoked. So at this stage, the certificate is no longer valid and, need, and needs to be revoked. The next stage that we have is expiration. So every certificate has a lifetime and once the lifetime ends, that certificate gets expired. And if the client needs that certificate, they have to request for the renewal of that certificate. 
And the reason that we have this expiration is that uh, you can't have a certificate forever because uh, there are times that we have uh, advancement in technologies. For example, uh, the algorithm changes. For example, at one point, MD5 was a popular uh, hashing algorithm. And then after a while, they realized that MD5 is not a secure algorithm. So a lot of certification authorities had to replace MD5 with SHA-1. So any certificate that had MD5 uh, algorithm in it was not secure anymore. So they had to be decommissioned and a new certificate issued for that. And then again, after a while, they realized that SHA-1 is not that secure and they had to replace SHA-1 with SHA-2. So then all certificates with SHA-1 are not secure anymore. So we can see as the algorithm uh, becomes more advanced, then the algorithms in the uh, certificate has to be replaced with the um, newer algorithm. That's why nowadays most of the certificate have lifetime of one year or maximum two years. And then after that, they get expired and the owner of the certificate has to request for a renewal of the certificate. So all of this that we have done so far is for proper public key exchange. The foundation of all of this PKI is basically the pair of keys that we have, the private key and the public key. We exchange the public key by using a digital certificate and the private key storage is very important to us. So this brings us to key management, meaning management of the key is very important. That's why we need to have proper key storage. We need to have a procedure for key usage and we need to have a proper procedure for handling of the key. So these are basically what we have under public key infrastructure for proper uh, management of digital certificates and proper handling of keys.